So this will be the average total cost. So uh, let's say this shaded area. When the price is greater and the cost is below, this area we call it as a profit. So since the price is greater than the average total cost, so this area is the supernormal profit. So the shaded area the shaded area is super and uh, normal profit. So firms under perfect market in short run will earn super normal profit when the price is greater than average total cost. And this area shows, uh, this shaded area shows the super normal profit firm could in. And this the same as the taking, uh, you take the price times quantity, price star times quantity, take the total, you get the total revenue. So when you minus, you remain with this area, which is the supernormal profit. Now, case two, we said a firm under perfect market in long run can earn just a normal profit. So this is case one. Case two. Uh, case two in long run in long run firms under perfect competitive competitive market and normal profit okay so when you firm in long run and normal profit this is due to the free entry or the new entering of firms or this is due to the new firms which join the industry so since in short run, they earn super normal profit, means the f new firms will be attracted to join the industry. Now, if they join the industry, means will increase the supply of goods and services. Now, if the supply of goods and services will increase, it means the price will decrease. Now, the, f the, the new firms will still joining the industry, then the price will be declining since the supply is increasing. So, in this case, so you can say the firms are, let's say, due to due to free entry of new firms, new firms which join uh, which join to earn the super super normal profit super normal profit uh, this will lead to increase in the supply and hence fall in price. So, uh, due to free entry of new firms, they uh, lead to increase in supply. So, if supply increases, the price will fall or lead to fall in what in a price so if the price falls the profit also will fall so graph can 
would be like this one. So let's say graph card. So here is the price or revenue or cost and here is quantity. Now as we said our price is constant, let's say the pista and the demand also is constant. Uh, the demand is constant D which is the same as the marginal revenue now the marginal cost is like this one marginal cost and we said the maximizing level of output is when the marginal cost equals to marginal revenue so this point is the maximizing level of output now if the firm uh earning normal profit means the price the price will be equal to average total cost so in order for this firm to earn normal profit price should be equal to average total cost so here you can draw the curve of average total cost as the follow be like this one so average total Cost. So the average total cost is equal to price. So at this point, the firm earns just normal profit. So normal profit means zero profit. So since price is equal to average uh, total cost, so the profit will be equal to zero. So in the long run, due to entering of new firms, this situation could exist. And the third is when a firm ends loss or incurring loss. So case three is when when a firm or when firms when the firms firms earning uh, losses. Or loss. Now, under this situation, the firm will in loss when price when the price is less than average total cost. So the firm under perfect market will in loss when price charged is less than average total cost. It means the average total cost will be higher than the price which the commodity is sold. So now, uh, if this situation exists, it means the firm will earn loss or will incur loss. So graph card, uh, start price or revenue or cost and here is quantity so we know that the price is constant and we said the price is equal to marginal revenue also the marginal cost curve uh, marginal cost curve cuts the marginal revenue at this point so the maximizing level of output is this one so as we said when a firm make losses it means the average total cost will be higher than the price so the average co total cost will be higher than uh, so assume the average total cost 
is above, then the price is below. So when uh, we join average total cost. So this is the average total cost. So when you go up to the minimum average cost, it will be to this point. So the maximizing level of output is this one. So you extend this vertical line up to this line which showed the average total cost. So this area Uh, this area uh, between the average total cost and the price, this area is the loss that is, that firm will incur. So this area, the shaded one, is the losses made. So this is what? The loss made by uh, this firm operating under perfect market. So these three uh, concept of profits is a, a supernormal profit, normal profit and losses is very important to know in order to see if the firm or the business is in which situation. So if it is making loss so you can uh, take some precaution or decisions to avoid this situation. So maybe if you, you can see that you are making loss or you are incurring loss, you are free to exit. So due to free exit, if you are making loss, you need to leave this uh, industry or this market and start uh, another activity or another business instead of uh, proceeding in this activity which you incur losses. So these three uh, uh, these three concepts of profit is very important in uh, making decisions what to do. Now, uh, let us go and see some problems. Uh, how we can solve some practical problems which involve uh, profit maximization. Now let us consider uh, the following review question. Uh, let us see this question. Said three from six students have a dream to start a business after completion of their studies. They are going to join an industry producing a producing in a perfect competitive market structure with a total cost function of this one. You are given the total cost function of a Q, a total cost equals to Q cubic minus 15 Q square plus 60 Q plus uh, 108. And the given price per unit of output is T shillings 600 and 60. Now you are asked to calculate the fixed cost of their businesses or the fixed cost of the business. So you ask to calculate the fixed cost of the business, then you calculate the maximizing level of output would, uh, would produce. Calculate the maximizing level of output will produce then Roman three among the three students one of them would suggest uh, to produce 30 units of output so one of students suggested that they can produce 30 units of output now does this make sense then Roman four you are asked to calculate the output the firms should produce to break even and Roman 5, we calculate the minimum cost. Now, let us attempt the question. The data which we are given, we are given the total cost 
which is a q cubic minus 15 q square plus 60 q plus 128 and we are given the price of the commodity which is 660 shillings now Roman 1 uh, we also don't have total revenue okay so the total revenue will be obtained by taking total revenue will be equal to price times the quantity but our price here is 660 then times Q so the total revenue be equal to 660 Q so these our information should be used to solve the problem now case one we are asked to calculate the fixed cost. Now the total fixed cost, total fixed cost uh, exist, exist even if the firm producing zero output so we can say q equals to zero the fixed cost will still exist so the total fixed cost will be equal to total cost even if the output is equal to zero so you put the output equal to zero so this will be equal to a zero cubic minus 15 times zero square plus 60 times zero plus so when you you evaluate this uh, information you will get zero plus 128 which is equal to 128 so the total total fixed cost will be equal to 128 shillings so for the case one uh, the fixed cost will be 128 so since it exists even if output is equal to zero now for the case two Roman two we are asked to calculate the maximizing level of output would produce. We said that a firm will maximize its profit since we are asked to calculate maximizing level of output means we want to find the maximum output which will lead to maximize profit. So the conditions conditions is that marginal revenue should be equal to marginal cost and the marginal cost curve uh, marginal cost curve cut marginal revenue curve from below so we needed to find the marginal cost so since we are given the total cost we know total cost equals to q cubic minus 15 q square plus 60 q plus 128 so the marginal cost is obtained by differentiating this uh, function this cost function so the marginal cost marginal cost will be equal to change in total cost over change in q 
which will be the same as when we differentiate this one uh, this 3 will come this side so we we'll multiply 3 uh, Q then 3 minus 1 I hope you know the uh, differentiation then you minus here is 15 then these two come here we multiply by 15 so it will be times 2 then q 2 by u minus 1 then here is 1 so you take 1 times 60 so it will be plus 60 times 1 then q 1 minus 1 since here the exponent is 1 plus here it means the our q here is in power 0 so you take the 0 this side you times 1 so it will be 0 times 1 8 128 then q 0 minus 1 okay so when you simplify this will be the same as a, a marginal cost will be equal to 3q square minus uh, 30q plus uh, 60 so 0 times this one will be 0 so uh, the marginal cost will be equal to this one also the total revenue the marginal revenue is obtained by differentiating the total revenue function. So when you differentiate the total revenue, which is uh, uh, you differentiate the total revenue, which is d of total revenue, which is six hundred and sixty q over d q. So when we differentiate this one, since this is a uh, power one, so the one will come this side. So you multiply with this one, then you minus one here, or the same as a uh, one times one, then s times six, uh, and the sixth. Uh, Q 1 minus 1. So when we differentiate this one, 1 times 1 be 1, times this one will be 6, and this one you minus be 6, 6, 0, Q power 0. So any number power 0 will be equal to 1. So here the same as a 1. So 1 times this one will be 600 and a so this will be the same as the marginal revenue. So the marginal revenue will be 660. So a firm will maximize uh, profit when marginal cost equals to marginal revenue. So now equating the marginal revenue equals to marginal cost so our marginal revenue is 660 equals to marginal cost which is 3q square minus 30q plus 60. So when you collect the like terms, uh, 3q square minus uh, this, will come this side, so it will be 3q, uh, 30q plus 60 minus 6660 is equal to 0. So when you simplify, it will be 3q square minus 30q minus 600 equals to 0. Now when you solve this quadratic, when you solve the quadratic, when you use the general formula, when you use your calculator, uh, Q1 So when you use your calculator, Q1 will be equal to 20 
units and q2 you, you take two values you get two values here so the first will be 20 units and the second will be negative 10 units so this negative units does not exist since we don't have negative number of commodities which is sold so this negative does not does not exist so you take the maximizing level of output should be 20 units so you can conclude that uh, therefore the maximizing level of output is 20 units now if one of the students or one of them will suggest to produce 30 units now let us see if this will be profitable or not so to make sense uh, this 30 units should be profitable so if the, uh, this unit will bring a higher profit so uh, that output will make sense but if that output will lead to making loss or lower the profit there is no sense to produce that unit so let us see we know that recall from a marginal cost we said is equal to 3q square minus 30q plus 60 okay now let us see if we increase 30 units let's say from the units is 20 now if we increase the let assume now the q is 30 units now let us plug this uh, units in this marginal cost let us see what will be the additional cost due to increasing 30 units of output so the marginal cost will be equal to 3 times 30 square minus 30 times uh, 30 plus 60 okay so this one when you uh, you, you, you multiply this will be 27 a uh, 